Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Media Talks TV with your host, Tony J. If you're new here, hit the subscribe, click the like, and hit the bell for other notifications. Let's jump right into it. Now, a lot of stuff has been happening this week. Um, I know so many people right now in the news is talking about Charlie Russell. I was going to hold my opinions about Charlie Russell until I found out the real truth. And Charlie Russell really made it hard for African-American women to be taken seriously when it comes to abductions and kidnappings. Now, I know some people will say, well, you know, give her some grace, you know. She might have been dealing with some mental health issues, but the, the big picture of it all is she broke the law. And she admitted that it was all false. And. I feel like there's a very big point that needs to be made that has not been made in the media and also across social media as well. But of course, you know, I think, uh, I believe Charlie Russell is what, 23? Um, one of the biggest problems about this new generation is social media has made us addicted to attention. Now, maybe in Charlie Russell's cases, she just wanted attention. Maybe in some very sick way, she just did this out of spite towards her ex-boyfriend. Whatever the scenario might be, still doesn't excuse the fact that she embarrassed herself, she embarrassed her community, and she also embarrassed her sorority as well. People don't even talk about that because I believe she was, what, an AKA? So she's pink and green. She's a part of that. So she embarrassed her sorority. <laughs> she embarrassed her parents. And she brought disgrace to her family name because now she will be known as the woman who cried wolf. Now, I'm not saying that she's the only person that's done this. There have been countless Caucasian women who have done similar things like this. But to use that as a deflection away from the real problem is what the media is not discussing. Now, I didn't start this channel for nothing. I started this channel because what I'm seeing right now in the media is that there are double standards. And while they are double standards and we live in a world of double standards, it seems as though whenever a woman does something stupid, society turns a blind eye to it. And in Charlie Russell's case, she did something extremely stupid and there's no really not a lot of vitriol going towards her for what she did. Whereas though, if a man were to actually pull this off, um, I think the media attention surrounding it would have been a lot more vicious. 
here and especially in the black community, it seems like giving people grace is like an easy way to excuse what she did. But the problem is in excusing what she did opens the door to more cases like this. Now, I'm going to get back to the issue with um, the double standard. One of the problems that I'm seeing in this, this situation is nobody really telling her she should go to jail. Filing a false re police report, making a false statement is a criminal offense. Has nothing to do with color, has nothing to do with whether she's a man or a woman. If I pick up the phone and dial 911 and tell somebody there's a fire and there isn't one, that is an abuse, a blatant abuse of police resources and emergency personnel. What could be used to actually create uh, a situation where, okay, I'm taking all my resources and putting it on that, and there's no no fire there, but then there's a fire down the block that can't get the same attention. That one thing creates and opens the door to somebody else doing this again. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, white people do it too. And I know that 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 visceral excuse that black folks like to use, you know, what about white folks doing the same thing? And this is this is not a color thing. This is somebody doing something stupid because they couldn't get attention in a relationship. Let's just leave it at that. You know, the problem is our community excuses degenerate behavior. And when people outside of the community who don't live within our community will take this example, cherry pick it and apply it to everybody within that community, even though we don't live in a monolith. We're not a monolithic group of people. And being that this is difficult and hard because there are millions of African-American women and Latino women that go missing every day in this country and there are no resources dedicated to that. She just etched away a movement to get that attention there. She etched it away. Another issue that I'm going to bring up, which is going to be controversial, is that in this generation, it seems as though we allow social media, we allow media in general to rush to judgment before finding out the real truth about certain issues. And the problem with American media and American society now is we're getting to the situation where you're, you're guilty before you're proven innocent. And no media society should get to a point and maybe any, any society in general, no, no society in general should have this rush to judgment or have a court of public opinion decide the fate on whether or not you did something wrong or not. When we first found out Carly Russell was missing, there was kind of like all hands on deck. We wanted to make sure that person was found and okay. But then what did that teach us? We took away attention from other important issues of the day because of this woman. And because 
she's clamoring for attention and she felt like she needed this sick idea to pull this off. It it kind of it kind of really signals something very deep within Generation Z, where they feel like they need to use social media to gain attention and notoriety and popularity. And one of the problems is with the quickness of social media. Some of the problems that we feel we could have fixed without social media can no longer be fixed. There's this idea, well, if it's true and it happened on social media, then it's, it's true. And then people can manipulate videos now. People can use AI technology to manipulate something for happening. I remember when social media first took off in 2012. And I remember the Coney 2012 situation. And I remember being dragged into that situation when I was younger, where people were like, you know, Aren't you going to stick up? Aren't you going to free the, the children of Africa and all this other stuff and not knowing who Joseph Coney was? People around campus were asking me to donate money to something that did not exist. And that's one of the biggest problems with social media today is that somebody could pick up this phone and think that this is the way to pull something off. This is the way to get attention. And sometimes we get a rush to judgment and we find out all along things weren't as true as we thought they were. And that's one of the main issues that I really honestly have a problem with. One of the things and one of the biggest issues is that with and and I'm gonna I'm gonna tread lightly on this because this deals with women. The Me Too fiasco in the Me Too generation, not to say that some of those accusations weren't true, but it, but one of the things is when people come forward with an accusation and people come forward with stories about them being victimized, about them being violated. While some may be true, on the other side, you have to give skepticism to the other side of the coin when it comes to accusations that they may not be true and that somebody could be making it up. And the problem is with our generation now, after 2017, it was, you know, whether we believe the accusation or not, an accusation is an accusation. And it's on the one that's accused to actually fight the accusation when in reality, the accuser is the one that needs to prove that the accusation was true. Problem is, with the Me Too situation in relation to Char Carly Russell, is it's open a Pandora's box where one can make an accusation, one could tell a tall tale or tell a story and people will go out and believe that to be true when the facts aren't there. And sometimes, and this is one of the biggest problems and this is why I don't, I don't really follow into the media hype about who got accused of what, who did what, 
what happened 10, 20 years ago. Because the reality is most people lie. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. Everybody at some point lies. And it's important that we hold people who lie accountable for their actions. Carly Russell lied. Carly Russell abused and misused emergency resources. Carly Russell filed a false police report of a missing person. That's three offenses. And, and she also stole from her, her place of employment. She stole. So she committed four crimes and you hear black media, especially people like uh, Roland Martin, people like, uh, you know, Faraji, um, what's his name on there, talking about, I'm going to give the sister grace. And the thing about giving people, I don't, I don't give liars grace. I don't believe there's a penance to be paid for lying. There's a penance. If a man lies to another man, guess what? That man is no longer to be trusted. Carly lied, so guess what? She's no longer to be trusted, period, point blank. It fucks up your credibility as a person. And this person is a liar. She's proven to be a liar, a thief, and a manipulator. That is who Carly Russell is. She openly admitted it. And I know there are going to be people backing for her defense, talking about she had mental health issues. Um, this has nothing to do with mental health. You can have mental health issues. You can have it, your own issues. But when it comes to being accountable for your actions, you hurt a lot of people with your actions and you need to be called to a penance for that a mea culpa of some sort but like I said in this day and age women are never held accountable for anything because we allow them grace to get away with these heinous acts. And that was a heinous act. If, if, if a man had did something like that, what's the difference between Carly Russell and George Santos? When George Santos was caught lying about who he was and lying about everything, the media went in on him. He's facing criminal charges. But because Carly Russell did something, we don't hold her to the same standard as a George Santos. Why is that? That's the big problem here. Carly committed a grave sin. And that sin has to be met with a punishment, period. So I think with people like Roland Martin and people like uh, Faraji on the culture, on, on, you know, the network, I don't believe there needs to be an excuse for Carly's behavior because so many like her in this generation think that it's okay to do stuff like this, to bring attention to yourself. And with this new generation, with Gen Z, and I hate ragging on the generation in front of me because I'm a lot more older and I understand, you know, you know, kids, the students will do stupid things. 
Um, the thing about Carly is she did something incredibly stupid. And somebody needs to tell her you did something stupid. It's not that she's a bad person. No, I think I think she has space to clean up what she did. Community service might be the best thing for her and to do public service announcements about not abusing the Amber Alert system, not abusing first response, first responders and not making false police reports. Maybe make a public service announcement and then also have her pay back all the monies that was donated to her to find her. Yeah. Donate. Those donations, people donated to her, she needs to pay all of that money back. That's the punishment I would give her. If I was a judge, that's what I would do. she get mental health evaluation, but she'll also serve maybe three to 4,000 hours of community service. And then work with the Hoover Police Department to make public service announcements, not fabricating false police reports. That, that would be a perfect punishment for Carly Russell. Jail wouldn't do it. You don't want to put somebody in jail for something, a nonviolent offense. So if I were a judge and I were on it and I was deciding her fate, I'd be saying, you know, you owe everyone in this community an apology. And you're going to do it through community service. And you're going to have mandatory mental health evaluations. You're going to go to counseling. And you're also going to write a letter of apology to every donor. And you're going to pay back all the money that was given to you through those donations. So you'll have restitution, restorative justice. That's how I would do it. That's how Carly would be punished if I were to judge. And like I said, one of the problems with this new generation, Gen Z in particular, is the attention drug, the drug of addiction and being addicted to social media, not being able to put down their phones, feeling like everybody has to like you in order to feel appreciated. I think that's one of the biggest problems with this new generation of kids there has to be a right or wrong in this situation and not any type of excuses. But that was my rant. You know, you tell me what you think. Thanks for joining Media Talks TV. I'm your host, Tony J. If you're new, welcome. Tune in for the next video. I'm out.